today's topic, we're going to work on understanding food chains and food webs. We're going to start with a food chain. A food chain shows the movement of energy and matter between organisms. So those arrows mean the movement of energy and matter. When we look at the arrows, an arrow means eaten by. One of my former students told me that she thinks about the arrow kind of as Miss Pac-Man or Mr. Pac-Man. So the arrow tip making like the Pac-Man mouth. So if this was Pac-Man, they would be eating the thing on this end of the arrow. Um, it's a good way to remember who is eating what. So whatever the way the mouth is facing, so the mouth of the arrow, is facing, that's the animal getting eaten. When we look at a food chain, we've got different levels. We have producers. Producers are the ones that make their own food. Remember that we make our own food through photosynthesis. These are going to be organisms that are most likely plants. And then our second category is consumers. Consumers are the ones that eat other organisms. We are consumers. We have multiple levels of consumers. We have primary consumers that eat the producers. We have secondary consumers that eat primary consumers. And we have tertiary consumers that eat secondary consumers or higher. In this food chain, our plant is the producer. And then we have our grasshopper, which is the primary consumer. We have our bird, that is the secondary consumer, because the bird eats the grasshopper. And then the snake and the owl are both examples of tertiary consumers. Let's practice what we just learned. Here's an example of another food chain that has a leaf from a plant, a caterpillar, a chameleon, a snake, and a mongoose. Now if you think about what you had for dinner last night, you probably ate more than one thing. And ecosystems, organisms eat more than one thing. If we try to capture this complexity of organisms being able to eat more than one thing, we would have what's called a food web. The rules of a food web and a food chain are the same. It just in the food web, there's more connections. The bottom most level is your producers, and your producers are your things that are making their own energy from the sun through photosynthesis, most likely plants. You have your primary consumers that are eating your producers. You have your secondary consumers that are eating your primary consumers. And then you have your tertiary consumers that are eating your secondary consumers. When we look at this food web, we have a lot of different relationships we can talk about. The snake eats the lizard, shown by this arrow, the different rodents, shown by this arrow. The snake is eaten by a fox, and can also be eaten by the hawk. There's insects are eaten by tarantulas, scorpions, and lizards. And this lizard can be eaten by the hawk or the fox. Just like this lizard here is eaten by the hawk and by the fox. Notice how with the food web, the rules are still the same. When we have an arrow, it means eaten by, and it's the transfer of energy and matter. When you eat something, you get the energy from it, and you get the pieces of it, the matter. Just like we did with food chains, we're going to practice now with food webs. Remember, your bottom level is your producers. Then you have your primary consumers, your secondary consumers, and the tertiary consumers. Remember to follow the arrows, and when we're reading an arrow, 
we're going to say eaten by. So there's a couple ways our food chain or our food web can be a little bit more complicated. The first way is by the addition of a decomposer. A decomposer breaks down or eats the dead animals or plants. So it's why you don't just see dead animals always on the side of the road. Something eventually happens to that dead animal. It's broken down and the matter becomes part of the soil that then acts as nutrients for the plants to grow. Most decomposers are fungi or bacteria. The second way we can get a little bit more complicated with food webs is we can have a really complicated looking food web like this that's not in the very clear rows like the first kind of food webs we looked at. But it's okay, you're going to be fine. Remember that your arrow means eaten by and it's the transfer of matter and energy. When I do a food web, I totally like to take a pen or a finger and trace your arrows. So the mallard is eaten by the owl. The grasshopper is eaten by the shrew. The sparrow is eaten by the rat, most likely the sparrow eggs. The rat is eaten by the hawk. When you're trying to figure out your levels, so which is which, always start with your producers. Remember your producers are your plants. Once you find your producers, finding your other levels are pretty easy. Everything other than a producer is a consumer. Remember we have our different levels of our consumers. Our primary consumers are the ones that eat our plants. So we have shrimp, we have schmelt, we have snails. We could also write primary consumer as like a one with a little superscript, a zero. From there, we have our secondary. Remember that our secondary, which we could also write as a two with a little zero, are the ones that eat our primary. So mallard, sandpiper, egret, this heron is here, heron, grasshopper, these are all secondary consumers. And finally, everything that eats a secondary consumer is a tertiary consumer, which we write as a three in a little circle. So shrews, moles, mouse, hawk, owl, rats, and sparrows are all tertiary consumers. The last thing we have to talk about is energy pyramids and the rule of 10%. Now we've talked about our different levels. We have our primary producers, then we have our primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary, this one has quaternary, we can keep going up, I just need you to know through tertiary. As we travel up this pyramid. Right? Here's our pyramid shape, our triangle's shape. Energy is transferred from level to level, and it's transferred by the eating of food. So this is the transfer of energy. Now, when we eat food, when you had that steak for dinner last night, you did not get 100% of the energy that was in that steak, that was in that cow. In fact, you only got 10% of the energy that that cow had in that piece of steak. The rest of the energy is lost in the form of heat. Remember when we talked about cellular respiration, what happened to that extra energy? It was lost in the form of heat. So 90% of the energy that you eat is lost back into the environment in the form of heat. And you get only 10% of the energy that is actually stored in your food. We can do some math associated with this. Calculating 10%, the energy stored, so how much energy is actually transferred from level to level is not that complicated. 
we need to just remember where our decimal point is. If there's no decimal points on a number, we're going to always put it at the end. To figure out 10% of the energy transferred, I'm going to move the decimal point one level, one number, to the left. So 20,000, moving it over 1, becomes 2,000. I take my 2,000, I move my decimal point over 1, and I don't have 2,000 anymore, I have 200. I have my decimal point here at the end because it's not there. I move it over 1 to go to the next level. I now have 20. I have my decimal point here. I move it over 1. I have 2. If I were to go one more level here, I move my 2 over 1. I would have 0 0.2 kilocals per meter squared per year at the next level if we kept going, if something ate this hawk on top. So just like we've been practicing all video, we're going to practice the energy pyramid stuff right now. So looking at this energy pyramid, I have arrows A, B, C, and D. I also have these orange arrows, W, X, Y, and Z. And then I have these blue arrows that are numbered. If we say that our producers had 50,000 units of energy stored in this level, you're going to figure out how much energy would be at each of these other levels. Remember to do that. You're going to take that decimal point and you're going to move it one space over to the left. So you're going to take that decimal point, you're going to move it one space over to the left, and you're going to place it there to figure out what two is, and you'll keep going, moving that decimal point over one step.